Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, Goodreads, and Periscope as Bookish Stitcher, all in word. I hope you've had a wonderful week since I last podcasted. I just wanted to say right off here that my heart goes out to anyone who views who's in Paris or Beirut, and I'm just really heartbroken for you guys and all the terrible sadness that has occurred this past week in those areas of the world. It's it's really sad, all the cruel things that people can do to each other, and I just, you know, hope that where you can spread light that you can and just helpfulness and, and love. And I don't want to cry on the podcast because I've been doing a lot of that in the past couple of days, just so sad from all of it. But I just wanted to say that first off because I, my heart really is breaking for all the stuff that's going on over there. So let's get into the podcast. Uh, I finished a few things this week, and one of them you haven't even seen. I, I feel like I got a lot of knitting done this week because my husband went on a guy's weekend. It's his, their once a year thing. They rent a cabin with friends, and they all get together and they watch. This time they watch Star Wars. They play board games. They play Magic: The Gathering, which is a card game, and just have a fun time. So I don't sleep really well when he's gone. So I stayed up at night knitting and watching sappy Christmas movies. I know, indulging my inner quirkiness. But so one of the things that I knit that you guys hadn't even seen is the grunge cowl. And this was gifted to me so sweetly by Danae, who is Din Knits. She's a designer, and she went to Knitting in the Mitten. And I was talking to her about wanting to knit some bulky stuff for Christmas presents really fast, and she was telling me about one of her patterns that she had and that she had just designed, and she gifted it to me, which is so sweet of her. This is the Grunge Cowl, and it is out of some O-Loops yarn in the Filch colorway. It's very squishy. It's a single ply, so it has lovely color and sheen to it, and this knit up so fast. It was just what I needed. Something really fast, a great gift knit. This is going to be a present my book club that I'm in. We do gift exchange like a secret Santa. So this is going to be part of my present to my person. And the ends aren't sewn in. They will get done before I gift it. And then also for my book club, just for everyone in general, I'm knitting them all bookmarks. I'm going to knit 10, 10 bookmarks, and then they can just all pick the one they want. But I'll show those when I've finished all of them. I've only finished a couple in there out in the car. It's a great carpool project for when I'm waiting to pick up my son. But yeah, so thank you so much, Danae, for the wonderful pattern. And this pattern, she also designed it to where it would work wonderfully for your first hand spun because you could do it with a thick and thin yarn. She talks about that all in the pattern, and it just shows it off. And her patterns are really fun and playful. So it's drop stitches and all kinds of stuff. And this yarn is lovely. Oh, Loops does wonderful things. And I have some more of theirs to show off. And the next thing I finished this week is my husband's sock head hat. And this pattern is by Kelly McClure, and it is in Dream and Color Smushy, which is a wonderful yarn. I'm going to just let my husband pick out the yarn from the stash that he wanted. It's blues and browns, and I knit the pattern a little differently. He likes a longer ribbing, so the pattern calls, I believe, for five, four inches of ribbing, and I did five so that he can roll it and then I think it calls for an extremely long amount of stockinette before you do the decreases to kind of make it slouchier but he didn't want it very slouchy so I just knit it till it fit his head and it's done so that will be for him for Christmas or his birthday which are in the same month he wants it earlier though when I told him it was done he was like yay give it to me so done he might get it earlier and then on to my works in progress I think I'll start with what got the least amount of work not because I don't love it I do love it just because I was working on Nana, Nana Suemo but this is in my Tangled Skein CA bag from Sue and inside this is my Star Shower Cal and it's by Hillary Smith Callis and it's done out of some Another Crafty Girl. 
in the Wheatley color. There's all the details. And I got one more repeat done of this pattern. This is the yarn. It's beautiful. And this is for the Sparkle Cal that is going on in the group right now. And here is the... So last week I was right... Do this without dropping any stitches on the book. Last week I was right about right here, and now right there. So I got a little more than one repeat done. And that I just kind of worked on in between the sweater. And then the next thing is a whip that I pulled out of hibernation because I had a couple hibernating whips that I really just wanted. Well, they weren't really hibernating, but they were from October that I really wanted to get done. And so this one switched bags because it wasn't a Halloween bag. And because I, I love Halloween, I love Halloween bags, but Halloween's done. So now I'm on to Christmas if you hate Christmas bags before Thanksgiving, I'm so sorry. Well, kind of sorry, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't have any turkey bags, and I don't eat turkey at Thanksgiving, so really. <laughs> but yay, this is in a bling your string bag. It's so soft and squishy. I love it. And inside are lights. It's bling your string. And in here is my peek a -bow shawl by Jennifer Dassault, and it is out of some Yarn vs. Zombies in the Kitchen Maids colorway. This is from a club of hers that I was in, and it's tweed and these very feminine, delicate blue and purple colors. And I have gone past the halfway point on this, and I'm on the finishing it up. It's going to be relatively small. But it starts over here, and there are these little pico edges across there. And it's, I mean, it's going to be a good size. It's not going to be huge, but I think it'll, if I, I might block this to make sure it's appropriate size, because it'll block out pretty well since it's garter. <laughs> I, I just, I love the way this looks. The camera's not picking it up expe especially well. But it's pinks and blues and purples and lavenders. It's it's just very girly, pretty to me. I don't know. And then another Christmas bag is a new project. I'm actually gonna take a drink really fast. I have a this in a mug that was gifted to me by Shannon, who is Snow Testine. I think I'm saying that right. At Knitten in the Mitten along with a little bag of caramel candies. And I'm drinking some. We just went to Trader Joe's earlier today, and they had this triple brew ginger. And it's like a sparkling ginger water. I like to drink ginger sometimes if my stomach's bothering me, or just for fun, but this is strong. It's like eating ginger candy. If you ever have had that, I, when I was pregnant, I would have ginger candy to kind of help my stomach but this is this is strong I can tell the triple brood part so in my Mina makes bag let me show the tag closely so you guys can see there you go art right, is a new project and these are the simple Skype socks and they're by Adrian Koo and I'm doing this as a knit along in the Bags by Awesome Granny group, they are doing 12 months of socks. And every month they'll pick a different sock and knit it. And I don't know if there's prizes. I think it's just for fun. And I've been wanting to participate in that. But the last month's was the Hermione's Everyday Sock, which I really wanted to make. I had the yarn picked out and everything, but I just didn't have time. I was still pretty much in the thrall of Christmas knitting then, which I'm almost done with now. I think I have two more things to make and they're going to be super fast, but so this month the sock that was chosen was the simple Skype socks and it's sport weight yarn so it's been going really fast. I think I've worked on these maybe two hours total. And this is in Undead Yarn. And this is her Monster High colorway and it's the Witch Base which is sport and it's 274 yards. It's 
knitting up so fast. And it is making the most squishy, wonderful socks you can see. What I decided to do, since the Skype sock has you add purl stitches in, and I didn't want purl stitches with a self-striping yarn. I know how to manage it, but I just didn't want to mess with it, so I just um, put in more of the Skype pattern. I'm loving working on those in the morning. I had missed having socks and coffee because I've been doing other things, so now I have my socks and coffee in the mornings again. And my last and the whip that got the most work on it is my non, why can I not say this word? Nano Suemo. National, November, National Knit a Sweater in a Month. And this is my Featherweight by Hannah Fedig. I'm knitting it out of some of my oldest stash, so I'm doing our 15 oldest skeins in 2015. And this is some handmade in Cashba, which is a wonderful base of merino cashmere nylon. That's kind of information there. It's so squishy, and it's funny because when you see it like this, you think, why would you knit a sweater in that? It looks like it's gonna pool, it's gonna be crazy. But that's not it reskained. I learned this from a dyer at Knitting in the Mitten. When this is unreskained, and this is what it looks like reskained. Isn't that crazy? It's a lot more subtle in the reskaining thing. So I got what I feel like is a ton knit on this week. I really pushed through and I knit on it a lot, a lot, a lot. And I don't want it to fall off the needles. So last. I'm at a tricky point because I'm on the uh, the band around the body of the sweater, which means that I got the body of the sweater done this week. Last week, if you remember, oh my gosh, please don't fall off the needles. Last week, I was about right here, and then I got all that knit. See, that's long, right? All of that knit. I, I'm excited. I feel like I did a good job. It may not be the fastest ever, but I, I feel like I did a good job because this is fingering weight yarn and I'm knitting it on a US size 4, which I don't know what that is in millimeters. Maybe like a 4? No, it's like a, I don't know. I'm not going to guess. I, I will look that up. But basically I'm knitting it, I think, two needle sizes smaller than the pattern calls for because I believe the pattern calls for a size six. So I feel like I'm doing doing good. This means, and now I'm on the, the band of the sweater, the band that goes around, and I'm knitting these on my marbles. But that means that I, this week alone, knit, because I, I lengthened it, I wanted it longer. I knit Let's see, I was at, I knit between 15 and 17 inches on a fingering weight sweater. And this is not the smallest size. Well, you can tell by looking at me that I'm not the smallest size. But I, I'm proud of myself because I really pushed through and tried really hard and it's working. And I might hopefully actually get it done in the month of November, which would be exciting since the Coraline sweater took me three over three months to knit. So it'll be good to have this off the needles. And my husband actually wants another sweater, which I am going to knit for him. He has two or three, I think it's two, and he never wears them. He's watching this now, and he's going to be like, I don't wear them because of this. <laughs> but he doesn't wear them, but I love him. And so I'm going to knit him another one, but we're going to pick the pattern and be very specific about what he wants so that we'll knit him the perfect sweater so that he'll wear it. I think he wants it like fitted, a lot more fitted. And I, I always think of sweaters as cozy, so I, I don't know. But we're going to find the perfect sweater. I have some leading men fiber arts into the woods colorway. And that is all of my works in progress. I, I, I don't know. I, most of this stuff will probably be done next week. Those socks are flying. Their stuff is on the downward, except for the sweater. And I really don't know what I'm going to cast on next. I have a couple Christmas presents. Like I said, I think I have two left. 
I need to do. But really, I don't know. There's, It's kind of that thing where there are 20 patterns that I would like to knit, but none that I really, I need to knit that. So figure it out. Normally now would be spinning, but I did a little bit of spinning this week on the drop spindles because I'm trying to work my way through those, but I didn't finish anything and I've been working on the sweater, so probably will bring that down when it's finished and show you, but I'm enjoying that. I'm re-falling in love with my drop spindles because I've been doing my wheel for so long that it's nice to use both because I have both. And then let's do group news before we do enabling. So group news, right now we have going on our Sparkle Cal, which is that, like I showed you, that blue yarn. Anything with sparkly yarn, I mean, if you want to use sequins or beads or if you want to spin some sparkly yarn and just call that your finished object or weave or crochet, knit, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm so laid back about that kind of thing. But that's going on through November and December. We have so many prizes for it. And there's a chatter thread. I'm going to open the FO thread today. So I know that's not open, don't worry. I'll open that sometime later tonight. That's really strong. It's not alcoholic, it's just strong taste of ginger. And I'm gonna open that tonight. And then, what else? We have a spinning giveaway in the group right now. So if you, and you don't have to already be spinning, you, you can like just want to learn how to spin and just go and enter there and say why you love spinning or why you would like to learn how to spin and it's some beautiful fiber. I showed it off last week if you missed it in an orifice hook. It was generously donated by Coggy's M-I-L at Knitting in the Mitten. And what else group news? Oh, we have a new giveaway. I was blown away by this. I was contacted by you so-and-so, and she asked me, do you do giveaways on your podcast? And I said, sure. I normally, I'm always so nervous about taking giveaways, but I'm learning that to just say yes and thank you. <laughs> so I said yes and thank you, and she sent me a bag, and it's so cute. It's for you guys. Well, not for me. She sent it for you guys. And it's in this. Thank you. And if you don't like crinkling, cover your ears for 10 seconds. I just want to show you this bag so you can see what you're entering for. It's a little bag by you, so and so. There's her little label, it's a sheep. It has little spotted leopards, spotted white leopards on little green jewels. It's such a cute bag, and her, her material that she uses is very soft. And I have two of her bags, as you guys know. I have a blue one that looks like a woven print with orange bunnies, and then a pink patchwork mermaid one. But that is her card. And I will put up her Etsy shop so you guys can go and check it out because she has really unique prints that I love. I, I remember when I, I think it was Yarning for a Smile who turned me on to her shop. And thank you, Yarning for a Smile. She gifted me a little Matrushka ornament pattern. I didn't ask her if it was okay to say this. I hope it was, Kim. But she gifted it to me yesterday and it was just the perfect time because I've been feeling kind of... I've been feeling pretty sad about all the stuff going on in the world right now because I can, I get into this thing where I think too much about it and then I just am really down about stuff. And so to get on there and to see that somebody else had said, I, I thought I saw this and I thought about you, it, it really kind of snapped me out of the sadness and just like, oh, there is goodness and kindness in the world. And so thank you so much, Kim. It was perfect, needed. It was like, you just knew. So thank you so much. This is the bag. I'm getting off track. This is the bag. And like I said, Yarning for a Smile, Kim actually told me about her bags. And I went on to her Etsy shop and wanted them all because they are all so beautiful. So I put that back in there. So crinkling again if you don't like crinkling. And then this, the prompt for this, I asked her, what would you like the prompt to be for the giveaway? And she had a really interesting one. I, I it's funny because you never know what people will pick for the prompt, and I love when it's something that intrigues me. And actually, from what she said, made me go and get decide for the book review this week. So the prompt for this one is going to be, 
What is your favorite pre-1900s book? So it could be written the 1800s, 1700s, keep, keep going earlier, but before the 1900s, so cl classic is what you, is what I think of in that kind of terms. Okay, last of that crinkling. And that is all the group news. Now for enabling. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that bag doesn't fall off the chair in the middle of the book. Okay. Are you ready? There's a lot of enabling. Because I just decided to get it done. There's some stuff that came in October that I hadn't shown because I was, <clears throat> sorry, I was at Rhinebeck and I was showing the Rhinebeck stuff and Lauren was showing her Rhinebeck stuff and so I just kind of skipped over a couple things that I had ordered in October. And then last weekend I was at Knit in the Mitten and like I said there was a market and it was my, that was my mom's Christmas present to me was the retreat and flying me there and all that stuff and she got me some stuff at the market. So I wanted to just show it now and get it all done. There was a yarn festival less than an hour, 30 minutes, something like that from my house, from San Antonio, this weekend called Kid and You and Llama Too. And all my friends were there and I thought about going, but I would have had just me and the kids because my husband was gone and he's back now, but I can't even imagine my son would have been like, don't you want this yarn? Don't you want this yarn? Don't you want this yarn? I want this yarn. My daughter would have been hugging all the yarn and she would have been terrorizing the animals that were there. If you ever have seen Tiny Toons or that little girl, it's like, I will love them and hug them and you've met my daughter. No, she's, she, just, she just loves them too much, maybe. So I would have been worrying about her getting eaten by animals and it would have just been not the fun, relaxing yarn festival that I enjoy. So I didn't go, but I missed getting to see all of you that went, and I'm really sorry. I know some people had asked me, and I said I didn't know if I would be going. I feel bad that I, I didn't end up going. But I was there in spirit buying all the yarn. And I'm also glad I didn't go because I didn't need any more yarn. I'm after you see, I'm at yarn capacity for a while Chris, till Christmas and people get presents. I just want to knit down the stash because I think I have over a hundred skeins in the stash now. I keep all my yarn stash on Ravelry just to kind of keep myself updated with that. And I don't like to have more than a hundred skeins in my Ravelry page because it seems it's it doesn't fit nicely into my organized little cubbies. So on to enabling. Last week I showed you guys the yarn from the goodie bag and then there were door prizes at the retreat. So I won two. It's really neat how they do their door prizes because they put all the names in a bowl and then they draw and I think it's so many door prizes donated that they go through all of them once so everybody gets one and then they put them all back in and then they go through them all again. So, so most of the time you get two door prizes and sometimes you even get three. But everybody always gets one, which was really nice. So the one thing that I won was Tix Trinkets. And it's on Etsy. And it's a little shawl pin and I, I love the saying on it. It was like it was meant for me. Reality has its, has, wait, okay. Let's correctly read the saying, Jeanette. Reality has limits. Imagination is boundless. So I just, you know, I love that. And then the other thing I got, and this is kind of the joke, because my husband told me no bags. Don't, he's like, get all the yarn you want at the retreat. Just don't come home with bags. And the first thing I bought at the retreat were bags, which is so funny. I think it's one of those things where somebody tells you, no bags, and you're like, bags, bags, bags. <laughs> so, kind of, yeah. But then I won a bag, and this is from Alpaca and You, and my daughter has kind of commandeered this bag. But, she, so she's she saw horses, and she automatically was like, mine. But they're horse, let's see if I can kind of get, there's a horse head, there's another horse body, oh, there's there's that. So she has been loving this, and also there was a, I didn't bring it down, there was a bag for the retreat, an actual like shopping canvas tote bag 
full of goodies and coupons and one of the things it had in it was um, a mini skein from One Twisted Tree which is a yarn that I've really been wanting to try and I will maybe ask for Christmas or something. It's purple. And this is the One Twisted Tree card. And I wanted to try this because I have actually interacted with Danny who does the dyeing job for that yarn on Instagram and everything so I would love to try out some of her yarn so I'll be asking for that for Christmas maybe and that was my goodie bag or not goodie bag my uh, door prize things that I got and so before I show you the market haul of everything I'm actually going to show you the yarn that I got in October that I didn't show and also I don't know if you can you can this is my Measure and Love hat. It's a pattern by Megan Williams and it's knit out of some nitty in color. It's blowing out the screen because it's so bright with its awesomeness. Because nitty in color does amazing colorways. But October yarn. So I tried to get into the O loops. For their Harry Potter thing and I failed. I failed every single time. I, I couldn't get up for the, I think the updates were like 2 a.m. or something my time, which I can't. I, I, I'm not that cool. I just can't force my body to do it. So I would try as soon as I got up and there were things left but not enough to where I could get. But since Christmas knitting time and I always add people to the list, I saw these bulky weights like the other bulky weight that I showed you, the filch for the grunge cow, and then there was this one. Oh, loops, and that's Madame Rolanda Hooch. And this is some beautiful cream, whitish cream, gray, black, and purple. And I know someone who loves purple who needs to get a present this holiday season. Not for Christmas, because she doesn't celebrate Christmas, but different things she celebrates. So I'm going to be sending that to her uh, after I knit it up. So I got that, that in mind. And then Heidi Undead Yarn, who's a friend of mine, is having a Halloween sale and 20% off all of her yarn in her stock. So I said yes. And I'm so glad I did, because I've been loving that sport weight. So I got some more of the sport weight yarn, and this is the Witch Base Children of the Cornflowers. Oh, it's really pretty. It's blues and yellowish oranges. It's going to make another great pair of cozy house socks. I really love this sport weight yarn for house socks. So I'll have, my son might try to claim this, but hopefully I'll have two pairs of cozy house socks for myself. And then... Since we all know that yarn doesn't like to travel alone, and when you have such a great discount, why not get another one? This is her Cookie Monster colorway, which is going to be a hat for my son, probably. It's a sport base. It's the same base. It's with the witch, and it's Cookie Monster. And it is this bright blue and black. It's basically the color of Cookie Monster. And white. So yay! And then this next one is proof of why I don't follow many dyers on Instagram. I need to actually unfollow this dyer, even though I love them. <laughs> but I saw this colorway pop up and I had to have it. It's Moon Rover Sock. I've only had her fiber, which is wonderful, but Moon Rover Sock in the wild. And I had to get this. Colors are gorgeous, as you can see, but I had to get this because of the name. Let's see if I can show you. Can you read that? Probably not. Light hearted. And I love that. I try to be I try to be light hearted about stuff and I am not always successful because I am a real human being and I fail at a lot of things that I try to be. But I just saw that name and I, I it spoke to me. So, and the colorway is just awesome. It's so great. And then, now to market. To market, to market. No. <laughs> I'm not going to sing that. Oh, gosh. So some of these my mom got me, and some of them I got, but I'm just going to show them all. So I bought 
Uniquely Yours had her bats all on sale, and I bought one of the bats. And I talked on the podcast before about how I had her bats, and they're the most gorgeous thing on the planet. But when I spun it, it was looked awful because I don't know how to spin it, and I ruined it. And I don't know how to core spin. I've never core spun. I've never taken a – I mean, okay, to say I don't know is a lie. I understand what they're doing. I have seen them do it, but I have not done it myself. And so I bought the bat, and then Dina was there, and she – there are a couple people that go to the Knit in the Mitten retreat that are just spinning geniuses. I don't even know, like, like speed spinners. They fill up, there's a mantle over the fireplace, they fill it up with yarn that they spin over the weekend. It's amazing and inspirational to watch. It just oh, it makes me wish that I could bring in my wheel, but I fly in so I won't. But so she core spun this for me. And core spinning is so interesting. The basic premise behind core spinning is you have a core, which she said she used crochet thread. And then this is going to be a longer one, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then you take the other fiber and you spin it so that the core is in it so the other colors pop out. And so it's a lot, it feels a lot denser than, it's not like fluffy, squishy, it's dense. But this is going to make some great coasters for around the house. And that was the core spinning one. And then I had to get something, one of my most favorite, oh, I really wish you could feel this. I can't, this is one of the softest yarns I have ever touched. And I bought all the things from her last year at this retreat just because it's amazing. This is Fiber Addiction and she's on Etsy. And I was apparently in a pink and blue mood this time. And this, the colorway name for this is amazing too. Not All Who Wonder. From the Not All Who Wonder Are Lost. So I, I love that phrase. And I, another one, again, that speaks to my heart because I love to wonder. And I am not often lost. I'm just wondering for the sake of getting some alone time in my own head. So Superwash Merino. 70%, cashmere 20%, 10% nylon, 400 yards fingering weight. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. But yeah, I don't know, it's pretty. I have a stack here. Let's just, let's just keep going. If you don't like enabling, you should probably turn this off. <laughs> Hopefully you already have. And then the next thing that I got, these almost like they're very similar. <laughs> this is a much softer base. But this is Ice Melon Stash, and it is an 80-20 nylon, 400 yards. And I think this one is different shades of green and turquoise, or uh, turquoise and pink, and this one has white pops of neon green. It's like, it's like this one is this one, but a, a lot more added. See, there's that turquoise, or that neon green. But the colorway for this one is Unicorn Detective. And her base is the Demo Sock. And it's 3.5 ounces. So I just thought that. That says Christmas to me for some reason. I, I love the traditional red and green colors, but I also was just very feeling like Christmas candy or something. I don't I don't know. And then I thought I was done at the market. I was like, I got two skeins of yarn. I'm good. That's all I need. And then I walked by and saw this, and I love tweed in the fall. I just, I love it. And so this is Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns, and these are all local Michigan people. So it's neat. Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns. Look at that. Look at the, it's, um, let's see what the colorway is called. Plum. Can you see the, the tweed standing out against the plum? It's gorgeous. This would make a beautiful sock head hat. Because as you guys know, I love that pattern. It's great for knitting. <laughs> I wish I could turn the camera and show you, like, the pyramid of yarn. And then this one is kind of a funny story because... I, she was getting ready to leave. Like the market had been over for hours and she was just hanging out. She was getting ready to leave. And I just kept 
thinking about this one yarn. I wanted her entire booth, basically. But there was this one that I just kept thinking about, and I was sad that I didn't get it. And she was getting ready to leave, and I said, can I buy some yarn out of your trunk? And she said, sure. So it's in the dark, and I'm like in slippers or socks or something, walking through the little downtown to the cemetery where she's parked, because there wasn't enough parking right so anyway so I bought this yarn out of a trunk in a cemetery parking lot <laughs> so I don't, I don't know that just seems very funny to me but this is another ice melon stash hand dyed yarn and it is in the pleased as patina and this is the Alaricia sock I think I'm saying that right but it is 75% merino 28% nylon 5% stellina you can kind of you can't really see the sparkle but it's sparkly, so you just have to trust me. Please does patina. It's a very soft base. So that is all of the yarn. Oh my gosh, this is so long. I'm really sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Last enabling thing. I, well, okay, almost. Soaps. So it's like I said, some of these my mom got and some of them I got. This is from Wonder Why Alpaca Farm. Got Honey Ale. Got Jingle Bells. Like I said, I'm a Christmas goober. It's funny because my friends have compared me to Buddy the Elf, which is kind of true, but I don't like that movie Elf. I know. It's, it's horrible that I don't like that, but I prefer Christmas classic movies. Oatmeal and Honey. It's, I'm a sucker for soap, as you guys know. And then the last couple things I want to talk about. Next thing I'm going to be on my needles. My mother-in-law found this pattern on Pinterest for the, these wristers that she wanted. And you can't buy the pattern on Ravelry. The only thing you can buy is this Norwegian hand knits book. And the wristers are, I don't even remember what page they're on, but they're these rose wristers. And it's a traditional Norwegian style pattern and she just she is Norwegian and she loves all things like that so see I, don't, I can't really show them without showing the there's that <laughs> really quick things you can't see well the charts not on that page so it wouldn't even matter but so she wants us so I had to buy the book to get the pattern so Hopefully the book can be as part of her Christmas present. I don't know, but that's going to be coming up next. Some wristers, some feral wristers. And then, oh, another enabling thing. Oh my gosh. This is going to be crazy. So my in-laws sent me, this is like never happened before, ever. They sent me some, some fiber. I don't think they've ever in the time that I've been knitting and spinning given me, they've given me like an Etsy gift card, but never like sent me yarn or fiber. So this is just like a just because and it blew me away. It was so sweet and it's gorgeous. Oh, look at that. And look at it. It looks like, I don't know. It looks like a, I don't know. I just watched Dark Crystal recently. So it looks like the little dog creature in the Dark Crystal. <laughs> but this is merino and it's ashland bay fiber i think that's going to spin up stunning with these browns and the different colors throughout I'm very excited to spin it and then in that and i think this is partly why they sent me they're like did you know that knitting was in the new york times and it's like a real thing they're like knitting retreats it was in the new york Times. it's a real thing i'm like yes knitting retreats are a real thing <laughs> But so they sent me this. It's so cute. It was just like they, they said, I, I, I don't know what if they thought that I was just like me calling up two friends and being like, hey, let's go hang out. At a, but so they saw this and since it was in the New York Times, it makes it real now that knitting retreats exist because they're very big New York Times people. But you've probably already seen it if you read knit one, purl two and lose yourself. And it talks about a knitting retreat. And Jenna, who is Captain Stitches, put a thread in the Ravelry group about what would be on your knitting bucket list. And if you guys want to go reply to that, it'd be great because it'd be fun to talk about it. But knitting bucket list, I've had the privilege to do a lot of things that are on my knitting bucket list. But this has new things like new retreats. There is a knit in style, oh right, this is about 
uh, retreat in New York, I believe, but there is a North of Ireland knitting and craft tour, which definitely is going on my knitting bucket list. And then the fjords, hope I'm saying that right, and Highlands knitting cruise, that's going on my knitting bucket list for when I'm retired and have endless amounts of money. But yeah, so that was really awesome. And then the book for this week. Since I was in, I was inspired since I decided when you so and so said pick the favorite book from before 1900s. I said, okay, what is one of my favorite books that I haven't reviewed on the podcast? Because I've reviewed Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, which I love. I love Madame Bovary. I don't know if I've reviewed any Flaubert, but I am reading through his life works right now because I just love him. And I love my Russian novels, of course, as you guys know. I'm just like, what have I not? So I have not reviewed any Jane Austen. And I actually was in a group on Ravelry that spent a year reading through all of Jane Austen and knitting patterns that went along with it, which is an awesome group. I don't think it exists anymore. But So I picked my favorite Jane Austen. It's a hard tie between this and Pride and Prejudice, but I picked this because I think I like this a little bit better, which I'm probably in the minority here. But Sense and Sensibility. And this is the story of two sisters, and basically they kind of have to leave their very nice home and they find a place where they can stay for cheap on the money that they have after the husband dies, I believe, after their father dies. And the sisters are Eleanor and Marianne, and they are polar opposites. Eleanor is the older one, and she's very practical and very, very, let's think about this and mull things over, and play. she's the planner. And then Marianne is the younger one who's like, yay, life, and let's fly by the seat of our pants and do whatever and forget consequences. And so it kind of is about their, it is about their relationship. And it's a lot about them slowly going from their polar opposites to becoming more and appreciating more the other person's way of thinking. So Marianne, through some very difficult stuff that happens to her in the book, kind of becomes to appreciate the way her sister thinks and to realize that you can't just follow your heart and fly by the seat of your pants all the time. You have to sometimes think things through or horrible things can happen. And then Eleanor, who always thinks and always is planning, kind of learns through romance that good things can happen and you can just let go and let somebody else and not be let somebody else do things and not be like such a control freak about things. And I, these two sisters are almost like the two aspects of my personality. I definitely have bits of both of them. So I just really love this book, and it's one of my favorite Jane Austens. And so I wanted to review that on the podcast. And I guess I want to ask you guys a question this week. I haven't done it in forever, but if you have read this book or if you haven't, which of the sisters are you more like? Are you more like Eleanor that plans and... It's very methodical, or are you like Marianne who just flies by the seat of her pants and whatever happens, happens? I'd love to know that. And then my other question that I'm really excited to know what you guys would say. So I talked earlier about knitting. My husband was gone, so I was knitting. We were having Christmas music playing, and my kids were having a dance party. So that's like a quirk of mine. I don't decorate my house or anything, so it's not obnoxious to the people in the neighborhood, but I love listening to happy, cheery Christmas movie music and movies, and it's just kind of a quirk of mine. I like doing it before Thanksgiving and all that, but so I would love to know what are some of your quirks, because I definitely believe in indulging the quirk. As long as it doesn't harm others, then you shouldn't be indulged, but as long as it doesn't harm others, it's fun to kind of indulge in your... So my husband was indulging in his quirkiness by going off and playing board games and magic cards and stuff like that. I was here indulging my happy Christmas spirit days. So, But yeah, I think that's all I have this week. And dear goodness, I need to end it now because it's almost 45 minutes. What did I talk? It was the enabling. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame the enabling. But anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and that you get to do all the things you love. Okay, bye.